The title of my talk is Advances in Neural Network Information Material. And uh, the work is done with uh, Jakub Dotkiewicz at Faculty of Computing, Poznan University of Technology. And uh, for classical information retrieval, we collaborated with Dr. Cieślewicz. Information retrieval and query answering are main natural language processing tasks. Um, information retrieval um, pertains to obtaining information resources that are relevant to information need from a collection. Queries are search of strings, uh, are search strings, keywords. The results return may or may not match the query, so results are typically ranked. And evaluation pertains to the ranking list. Query answering is a sophisticated NLP task where a system generates a search query from a natural language question and finds a concise answer from a set of documents. There is a <clears throat> significant difference between these two tasks. Mainly query answering, um, the query is a sentence. So uh, it constitutes a sequence of words. Whereas in typical um, information retrieval, a resource, uh, queries are in a form of uh, keywords, bag of words, and that excludes um, some uh, sequence uh, processing in neural networks. Uh, up to uh, 2018, the prevailing methods of information retrieval were classical ones. Uh, they generally use three uh, stages, baseline, uh, according to some uh, theoretical method. For example, we use divergence from randomness, then query expansion, here uh, where embedding usually is used, and post-processing. Uh, neural networks um, uh, have some problems because they are difficult to use with keywords. And also the, uh, there exists a lack, lack, lack of small number, uh, lack of annotated resources. That this number of queries uh, usually does not exceed several hundred, and in medical domain, uh, it does not exceed 50. Information retrieval results are very much dependent on the form of queries, collection of documents, and parameterization. Here we um, present results for three uh, medical information retrieval challenges. Uh, Biocadi, that was uh, 2016, TREC PM 2020, and TREC coronavirus virus 2020. Uh, <clears throat> the Biocadi challenge is most studied by a medical uh, search benchmark but not a very large one, around 800 data sets from 20 uh, curated repositories in the form of uh, XML and JSON formats. Uh, here I show distilled queries, 15 queries for the challenge. And these queries, um, are related to genomics. Uh, here, there is a typical uh, document, examined document. And this document uh, could be hierarchical, that is, one could go deeper 
to these links here, which are more, uh, maybe more informative than the original XML document. The results are evaluated with some metrics. The most popular metrics uh, in, in Biocadi was uh, inferred AP, inferred NDCG, uh, and precision. And these are uh, cumulative results <coughs> from original challenge and then uh, later papers. And uh, for this benchmark, we currently hold the best overall results. That is this uh, red uh, marked uh, data here. Um, in the original uh, challenge, uh, INF and DCG measure was the most valuable. So UCSD, um, result the 0 0.1 uh, uh, was declared the best but notice that every other result is worse than ours by much that's why i, I consider this the best result so far obtained with the classical method so for us uh, using um, advanced neural network was new. And we applied uh, these methods for the recent challenges, track PM 2020 and track coronavirus 2020. Uh, there are preliminary results, partial res evaluation results that is measured, but there's no comparison between systems and no scientific purpose um, except uh, to uh, which analyze the results. Uh, the, the, the evaluation of Tech PM 2020 was released two, two days ago. Sorry for this. Um, this is. Um, uh, our architecture and uh, this consists of three stages and this is a pre-processing stage here uh, the attention between query word and document passages and in our approach the attention layer is the bottom layer and there is uh, some evidence that in a uh, case of information retrieval, this is the best approach. So we have a query word here of size uh, here, ve vector size 300. And we have document passages, doc document passage. And these are words in this passage. Passages are padded to the size of 500. So create, we create a tensor in this phase. Then the next phase is neural processing. Uh, and we do uh, convolution. And at the end, we flatten. After max pooling, we flatten uh, the network because here we're dealing with tensor. And we go through the a deep neural network part. And the last stage is scoring, evaluation of uh, scoring in form of probability that the document is relevant to the query. And here we use softmax to, um, to normalize to one uh, and, and use softmax threshold. Um, I'm coming now to the track PM 2020. Uh, this is the uh, sequential uh, track, which takes part every year. Um, 
the topics and collection is um, repeating itself with some variations. So this year, uh, there were 40 queries in the following form. And what we see here is um, a tax which uh, relate to type of a cancer gene and treatment. Uh, here we have 29 million of documents which are abstracts and they uh, form nearly 300 gigabytes of data. So it is difficult to find the document of given uh, ID uh, when we, for example, search for a document or make, uh, make some intermediary calculations. Um, the judgment is quite complex. Anyway, um, when the documents are evaluated uh, for a given submission, some documents are not judged. Therefore, we have to infer measure. And this procedure is known to work only when we have la a large number of relevant documents which is usually uh, not always the case. And that uh, makes a result um, sometimes questionable. Here I'm showing the premier results of uh, PM, uh, TREC PM uh, 2020. Um, what uh, these figures represent is our result in orange and track medium results. So we have uh, quite significant advantage over median results. Our results are better than uh, median results by uh, at around 10% or more. We still do not have the overall uh, participant results. But these results indicate that um, our neuro, uh, attention neural network works. And uh, this is uh, important. We had some very innovative application of external queries. We, uh, uh, we included 30 external queries uh, for learning. Unfortunately, the results did not improve because of this. Finally, I come to the COVID uh, challenge characteristic. It consisted of five phases, uh, and there was incremental size of a query set of a phase and size of a document. So there were 30 questions in phase one, 50 in phase, phase five. And there was a unique report for each phase. A, a set, documents, set of documents came from various sources, which relate to COVID-19. Uh, uh, this repository is called, uh, is called CORT19, and it consisted of bioarchive, medarchive, and peer-reviewed publications. Uh, there were several metadata, and here is overall size characteristics of the system. So, um, the uh, latest stage consisted of over uh, 191,000 documents. These were measures used for evaluation. Now, the metadata consists of abstracts, article bodies, metadata abstracts, and article titles. 
And we use abstracts and in some cases metadata abstracts were included to abstracts. We use classical word to vec in order to create 10 times word vector space. Now, recent work on information retrieval um, uses passages, that is fragments of documents. That is the documents are related to passages, in our case of size 100, 500 words. And this is the, the procedure for creating passages. So using passages instead of uh, full documents uh, increases complexity of calculations. Um, here I uh, present uh, very preliminary results of track COVID results. So these are three best results and our results. And as you see, uh, these leading leaderboard results are much better than our results. And we were very puzzled uh, because of this. And until we got the results from Tech PM, we thought that maybe we do something wrong. But it happened only very recently, and actually uh, it is not yet explicitly stated. Um, these leading results in our review um, uh, used um, unjustified procedure. That is, they used known answer from previous phases. So for example, in phase 50, they used 45 answer from the phase four. In the validation phase. So, you know, it is like um, knowing uh, ninety percent of answers from the previous phase. Um, I expect a heated debate about uh, how this could happen, and of course, when you go to some, uh, because there are two papers which appeared, some of these papers used a, a very scientific language for justify such a procedure. But we exclude that such procedure from the beginning. Um, I summarize with conclusions about the uh, status of the dense neural networks, uh, that is attention, with the, the first work of Vasfani in 2017 uh, and the uh, multi-attention BERT uh, 2018. These results were obtained for translation neural networks, where uh, the set of questions, uh, the, the set of documents could be several hundred thousand. And the documents are sequential. So when you comparing, for example, uh, a document in one language and in a document in a sec second language, you, you can use sequentiality of a neural network. This does not happen when um, when you have information retrieval in a, in a form of a query. For track coronavirus, there was also a questions, there were also questions corresponding to keyword query. So you could possibly use this. For information retrieval, the number of questions is very limited. It's at most in general domain several hundred. 
the medical information in Hugo is the hardest because you have vast resources, maximum 50 queries, very complex evaluation. And in addition, in the coronavirus, changing knowledge in many aspects in the eight month time. Our work on TREC PM, Precision Medicine, shows that the attention networks improve baseline. We are waiting for a complete assessment of challenges. A TREC coronavirus challenge, in our mind, is distorted by leaderboard syndrome. People desperately trying to get on top of, uh, of the board. And without... Uh, scientific regard, actually. Calculations are very demanding. We are currently extending our original result on the farm of NVIDIA card at the University of Technology, where we use 320 gigabytes of RAM. And we need to understand why bringing the external knowledge from top medical pages did not improve the results. Thank you. Uh, so, thank you, Professor, for your presentation. We would have uh, one question uh, to your presentation. Uh, and this is a question about, uh, well, uh, transfer learning. Uh, could, now that you have uh, this neural network, could it be used to bootstrap similar systems for information retrieval on related topics, or, for example, different pandemics in the future? Uh, with using transfer learning, or sh would uh, such a network need to be, uh, well, learned from the ground? Uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a very complex question. Um, the medical information retrieval is very complex and specific, starting from um, word to vec representation. So word to vec uh, representation from Wikipedia will perform poorly on uh, on medical medical retrieval. Uh, the second aspect uh, which I didn't mention here is that in some approaches uh, you need la you need large databases for um, uh, for example take uh, uh, genome name and uh, it may have variants. And genome name has 10 aliases. So uh, in a document, actually in one, e in one year, I think uh, 2018, there was a situation in which uh, papers defined as, as retrieved, uh, as relevant, had only 40% of words which appeared in the in a query, and uh, you would need to understand the effect of a gene. So, from the uh, from the context of a text, actually, the annotators would um, conclude that this these effects uh, pertain to a given gene. This is extremely complex, and I am afraid. Uh, that uh, this is not uh, easily transferable because of, of this specificity to other areas. And um, I, I, for example, uh, in, in track, there are around 10 tracks, different tracks. There are classical tracks, uh, like track GAF, Robust uh, 2004, and so forth. And initially, for example, um, uh, bad representation or attention representation transfer to medical area did uh, poor, uh, gave poor results. Only after you really uh, optimize, tweak very many parameters, uh, then you get results. So these results, which are on top of leatherboard, but not this one, uh, that require enormous work with teams often of the size of 10 to handle all these complexities. That, therefore, my, my answer is that 
and there will be limited use. Uh, but of course, there are many tracks. So people working on, on, on similar methods in every, every domain. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Professor, for your uh, presentation and for your answer. I think we have one more question, uh, but uh, the application doesn't show it to me. Okay. Uh, so uh, there is one more question from the audience. Did you make any comparative studies on of your model and non-AI models for sample queries which your model couldn't beat? Uh, and um, is there any, uh, any valuable insights from such a comparison? Yes, uh, you know, in, in tech contests, uh, you're allowed to submit uh, usually three runs, but a track coronavirus actually at the later stage, you could submit eight runs. And these eight runs were um, various options of algorithm. So all the things starts with baseline. So um, our baseline, um, which is the Terrier method, in previous contexts gave very good results, but not at this one which is specific to the coronavirus uh, knowledge. Uh, some people got uh, almost to the top of the leaderboard with purely classical methods. But our work shows that uh, you, when you use uh, properly these advanced networks, your result can improve by 10 or more percent, which is, which is a lar uh, large improvement, actually. You know, for example, for BioCaddy, our improvement was 8% from the baseline. So you have various strategies. You can improve baseline. And then, of course, you can tune the network to this, to this baseline. So um, for, for this uh, track 2020, we started from Terrier. Uh, so here we demonstrate the improvement. Uh, we intend to do the same with BioCaddy, so they apply neural networks to our winning baseline approach and see whether there also the result will improve. So you have you have many actually variants, many options in the method, and therefore it's so difficult to uh, to compare how good a method is because uh, people are doing very various tricks to improve the results. Some of these, some papers are on a verge of fraud. Really, I, you know, I could, I could show 10 such papers claiming, you know, great advances, whereas there is almost no advance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think these are all the questions that you have. And also this is all the time that we have for today. So thank you, Professor. And uh, in general, I would like to thank all speakers today for their wonderful presentations. And also I would like to thank all the viewers for your attention and for your questions. So with that said, I think the session is over and it is time for a break. So thank you. <laughs>